Hey guys, welcome to another brilliant episode of the Tech Talk Show on the Owl Media channel. With me, Wilbert, bringing you tech news from all around the globe. Now, before we get into any of the items we have to discuss today, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you who watched, liked, subscribed, shared our previous video. Charlie, I checked the comments and there was some very amazing reviews over there. So please do so, keep doing so, keep liking, keep sharing, and please turn on the notification button so that you don't miss any of our next videos. Jumping into our first story, Elon Musk is in the news again. Now, somewhere last week, he was trending because of a, a Karl Tucker interview that he's going to be doing with President Vladimir Putin, who's the Russian president. Now, because Twitter is a platform that doesn't censor, this is the best you know, a place where the interview can be done. But for this particular time, he is in the news because of Neuralink. Now, for those of you who don't know what Neuralink is about, this is a technology that is seeking to interface a brain chip with the human mind. So we are gradually moving towards, you know, the age of cyborgs. Now, let me tell you a bit about the Neuralink chip. Neuralink is a brain chip a startup founded by Elon Musk in 2016. It's a device which is the size of a coin and it will be surgically implanted into the brain or the skull. Such uh, a device has very ultra thin wires going into the brain and developing um, a brain computer interface which we call BCI. So the disc would register brain activity and send it over to a device such as a smartphone through a common Bluetooth connection. The first product called telepathy would allow people to control their phones or computers just by thinking, said Elon Musk. Planting a chip into the part of the brain that controls motor function would also enable people to overcome neurological disorders, the company claimed. Musk said that initial users would be those who have lost uh, the use of their limbs. What Neuralink seeks to do really is just to interface between AI and the brain and this is primarily meant for people who have lost you know the use of their limbs have some you know nerve disorders to be able to still interact with computers and things so what testing has Neuralink carried out in the past Neuralink has been tested on monkeys and on pigs the company showed several monkeys playing basic video games or moving a cursor on a screen through Neuralink implant. Now this is the actual part of the story which is of interest to me because on the 31st of January 2024, that's just right last month, the first human testing phase was begun with a volunteer. And so this brain chip that we are talking about was actually implanted into the first human being. Elon Musk is saying that the first trial was very successful and they're monitoring to see how effective the technology is. But then there are some concerns, I mean ethical concerns about such a technology. This procedure actually involves having a brain chip or this neural link chip being inserted into your brain. This procedure would require a brain surgery and anything can go wrong, Charlie. If your brain is being tempered with, you can go into shock, you can go into coma, you know, there can be hemorrhages. What if you actually die from such a procedure? So this is still an ethical issue that Elon Musk has to go around. I mean, the first human testing was actually sanctioned by US authorities. And so there is no going back on this Neuralink technology, but then the um, ethical issues are still a bit to be concerned about. So I don't know what you think about such a technology. Is this something you would like to be done on you? I mean, there are great advantages to such a technology. Just imagine that you have a family member or a friend who has lost a limb, isn't able to move their hand because of some nerve damage. Now, this kind of technology would help them actually to move their limbs, you know, because it actually like sends impulses to parts of your body which were previously inactive. Now, with also people who are incapacitated, right, this um, helps with accessibility issues as well. Because just imagine that just by thinking, you'll be able to move the cursor on your screen, you'll be able to type, there might be some technology to speech function in the future you know so definitely this has a lot of positives but like I said there are also great concerns about the actual loss of human life and permanent brain damage that such a procedure could cause so tell me what you think in the comment section I'd like to hear your thoughts so for our next story we are talking cybersecurity now for those of you who do remote work 
um, actually having to work from elsewhere other than your office, you know that you'd have to use a VPN, right? A virtual private network. Now, this allows um, the company or whatever firm that you're working with be able to have great control over their networks to avoid compromise. But one of the providers of such networks or such technologies or such softwares is in the public view now because of some security breaches to their software. Now, it's no other than Ivanti. So Ivanti is a company that provides software solutions for IT management, security, and optimization. The story reported indicates that researchers have identified a vulnerability in Ivanti's VPN, that's a virtual private network software, that attackers are exploiting on a large scale. This flaw potentially allows attackers to compromise systems using Ivanti's VPN. For those of you who are fond of using VPNs, right? This is a technology that's actually like by a very um, reputable company and they have been breached. So don't just go online and download any VPN, you know, for downloading torrents and all that. You have to be aware of the cybersecurity threats. All your data can actually be stolen by some hackers, wheresoever they are. Next up, for those of you who want to gain another skill into digital marketing, I have great news for you. There's a course online called Green Digital Skills. Now, the actual perk uh, about this particular course is that successful completion of the course gives you a one-year free LinkedIn premium access. And let me tell you all about it. Green Digital Skills is an effort to promote sustainability and digital literacy. This actually helps you supplement your learning journey or your career growth with extra learning material. And it's for one year. Now, LinkedIn is not cheap. Honestly, if you know the LinkedIn learning platform or even having a LinkedIn um, premium account, it's not something that's cheap. I mean, this is over a hundred dollars per month. So getting actual one year access is a huge thing. So let me know if it's something that you really want to do, let us know in the comments. Now just drop a comment for us to know. But I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to take advantage of. On the Tech Talk channel, we are not just telling you stories, but are actually empowering you, giving you actual skills. And today on our how to, we are going to be teaching you how to add captions to your videos using CapCut. Now, for the purposes of this particular video, we're going to be using our phones and maybe some other time you look at how to use your PC to achieve this auto captioning. First off, let me tell you a bit about CapCut for those who don't know. I don't know which rock you are under if you don't know what CapCut is, but CapCut is an all-in-one video editor that lets anybody or any anybody anywhere create just about anything. It's owned by ByteDance, that's the same company that um, owns TikTok. So that's why if you open CapCut, you'd realize that it has seamless integration to TikTok. If you have a TikTok account, you can just log in there and it just merges with all your data. So now let's jump into how to actually add captions to your video. So first off, head to your preferred app store. If you use an Android device, then you have to go to Play Store. If you use an Apple device, then you have to head to the Apple App Store. Download the CapCut software. Okay, so upon reaching the app, right, like I have with me, open a new project. Now, you would have to create a new project to be able to even add the captions. So add a new project, and then looking at the bottom of the screen, you see the text button, text button. So click on the text button, and then you find another display still at the bottom of the screen, auto captions. Now, upon clicking the auto caption button, you see a button that tells you to start. Click on start, and just let CapCut do its work. Depending on the length of the video, right, or the quality of the video as well, it might take, you know, a few minutes or a few seconds to generate the, the captions for you. And voila! Welcome to the very first episode of Tech Talk on Owl Media with me, Wilbert, where we're going to be talking about everything technology. In subsequent videos, we'll show you how to really tweak some of these settings and get the best out of the auto caption feature from CapCut. So all too soon, we've come to the end of another episode of the Tech Talk show on the Owl Media channel with me, Wilbert. As always, bringing you all the tech news from across the globe. Now, I believe you've learned a lot from today's video. So come on, like, share, comment. We'd like to hear from you and stay tuned until next time. Peace.